Hi guys. I'm going to read this first part if that's okay. Um, usually this blog is about bipolar disorder and my daily life in 2020 dealing with my disability and people judging me for it. Judging all of us affected by mental illness, trying to rid the stigma, stereotype, this burden on our family and friends, our overly emotional selves, our deep sadness and confusion with the world, our guilt and our shame. I want to tell you guys a story about the first time I ever experienced racism from someone that I respected and trusted. Um, I was 18. And this isn't the first time it happened. This is just the first time it was so blatant that at the young age that I was at, I was able to see it. Um, I was 18 and I had just got a job at a clothing store. It was a business style women's clothing store um, in an outlet mall. And um, my boss was a white lady and she was very friendly. And actually when I got the job, she found out that I had not given my previously, previous employer notice of two weeks. And when she found out, she said, I'm gonna let you have the job, but you better not do that here because she had already hired me. And um, previously I'd worked at McDonald's and I quit after a year because it gave me a nickel raise after a year um, of working my ass off for them. And so I up and left one day, I'd had it. And um, so I start my job in the clothing store and everything's great and my boss is really nice. And, you know, there's a lot of people that come into the store. There's a lot of tour buses that come with people from Korea and other parts of the world. And she doesn't say anything. She's very friendly. Um, and uh, one day this lady and her daughter come in and there are two black women. And they were dressed so nice, nicer than I'd ever seen anyone dressed in our town. They were not from where I lived. Um, I lived in a really small town of maybe 40,000 people at the time. And uh, they were walking around the store and you could tell they were very well off and they were very friendly. And the lady gave me one of the nicest smiles I'd ever seen in my life. And um, she was so happy that when she came to the store, we were nice to her and she was looking around shopping. And um, you guys have to remember I'm older. This was 20 years ago. Um, and uh, she, I don't know where her daughter, I think her daughter might have left the store, but she stayed in there. She was shopping. No, her daughter was still in there. She was in a different part of the store behind a rack. There were a lot of clothing racks. And the mom was looking at some jewelry behind the counter and there was a um, partition so you couldn't see her. And I'm standing at the counter and my boss comes up to me and says, Stephanie, where did that black lady go? Where did she go? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm sure she's here somewhere. I looked around and I couldn't see her right away, but I said, I'm sure she's here somewhere. And she said, where is she? Where is she? And the lady pops her head up behind, from behind the partition and looks at me and looks at the woman and looks at her daughter and says, come on, we're getting, she walked over to her daughter and said, come on, we're getting the hell out of the store. And I was crazy. Rushed. I could not believe that someone that I respected that much would treat someone that way. And I was so ashamed and so upset to this day. I'm mad at myself for not running out of that store and giving that woman a hug. And this is the kind of thing that black people face every day. And... Someone died, someone was murdered, and amidst a massive cover-up, and amidst of irresponsibility, and amidst the president who has nothing to say about it, people got angry, and people started looting, and people started destroying things. And a lot of people are angry about that, and I'm not. Um, I understand. I don't think it's right, but I'm not mad about it. I understand. Um, 
that same woman. I can I kept my job. That same woman. A couple months later, she's really nice. The security guard. He was black. She she was really nice to him. I happened to mention to her one day that I thought he was really cute. She said, "Well, you can't marry him. What would your kids think?" And I just didn't even know how to respond. Um, I ended up moving, and I never spoke with that woman again. Um, maybe once I did, but I never. I don't think I reached out to her. Um, I know I talked to her once after that, but I think it had something to do with something having to do with my family. <clears throat> um, and uh, totally a job interview that a family member had where friends and family had to be in her type of thing. Um, but it was a disgusting experience. It will stick with me the rest of my life. It's not the only time I've experienced that when I was fully psychotic in San Diego, in LA. The only people I really hung around with were black people and it's because they were the only people who didn't judge me for being psychotic. Um, yes, there were some people who took advantage of me. I'm not mad at them. I looked like a rich white girl who had lost her mind and they had no home. I'm not mad at them for stealing my clothes. They didn't have any clothes. I would have given them to them. Um, but I also had people who, I was outside of Burlington Coat Factory one day in my last episode, crying my eyes out on a bench. Tons of people walked by, I said nothing. This really nice black lady comes up to me. She's younger than me. Beautiful, gorgeous. And she says, what do you need? You need help? I'm gonna get you some money, okay? She comes back and she gives me $280 and a little pocket Bible. $280. And she wasn't rich. A lot of people say that they're colorblind. I'm not colorblind. I see color every day. I've never been colorblind. I see purple, I see blue, I see black, I see white, I see red. I see pink, I see all the colors. I see white people, I see black people, I see Asian people, I see Indian people. And when I see someone who's not white, when I see a black person walking down the street, I think about how I'm gonna react. And I do that because I know they're in pain. I know people look at them every day and judge them for the color of their skin. I do everything I can to make sure that they know even if we're just passing by on the street, they are worthy of my respect. And that is why people are upset right now. I said in something, I've been on social media a lot. I've been crying for like off and on for a day and a half. This is the world that exists right now and it needs to change and it will change and I believe that, but if you are someone with mental illness, you of all people should understand how important it is to respect people who are not like you and to not judge them. And um, I'm so sad for the friends and family of George Floyd and the friends and family of anyone who has been disrespected by the police when I was manic and I was in San Diego, anytime I was around a black person, the cops would roll up out of the woodwork anywhere. Anywhere and harass us. We were at the, the U.S. Grant in downtown San Diego, sitting in the lobby, me and three black guys. And within minutes, cops were there to question us as to what we were doing there. I paid for a room. I spent about 700 bucks there. I was manic, I was blowing my retirement. But I knew enough to know that no one with me had done anything to warrant that kind of reaction. 
I think that when you live in a society where you're very sheltered from what's happening, it becomes very easy to become complacent and not understand what other people are going through around you. So I just want to ask all you guys to, um, to pay attention and to not be colorblind. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow.